In this video, we are going to take a look at the new features in the latest version of Lightroom. Every year, Adobe does a, a number version change where Lightroom goes from seven to eight, now we're on nine. It doesn't mean that it's a big feature update. It just means that every year, Adobe changes the version number as does just about every other company out there. Now, if you're curious, Features have been added all year. So there is no one big update of the year. Features get added and I'm putting the list on the screen here so you can see all the things that have been added this year. I'm also gonna put links in the description to all of my what's new videos in case you missed any of those updates and you wanna go find out some of those features that you missed along the way. Also, quick disclaimer, this video is specifically meant for people on the Adobe subscription plan. If you are not on that plan, you should stop watching this video right now because it wasn't made for you. Just saying. Okay, let's get to it. Let's start off with really the biggest feature, which is going to be panorama stitching, which we've had for a while. We'll go ahead and stitch together a few photos. And when you do that, you're gonna see a new fill edges checkbox over here. It's right under boundary warp. So fill edges actually goes in there and fills the edges. You gotta love the way that I'm explaining this. So uh, we, we've had boundary warp for a while, which will warp the photo to go in there and, and make those edges you know, appear as if they weren't cut out. The problem is, is it is warping the photo in a way and, and the results are sometimes unpredictable, all right? Fill Edges uses Photoshop's content aware technology. We've actually had this feature in Photoshop for a while. So it's cool to see that content aware technology making its way over to Lightroom. And I'm hoping we see more of that in the future, but it'll go in there and fix that. Now, this was a super easy photo to work with. If I cancel out of here, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, we'll, we'll test the boundaries and I already know the result, which is why I'm showing you this because I think it's important to, to also set your expectations. So here we've got a photo down at the bottom left doesn't look too bad. The top right though, it, it has to invent trees to fill this, right? It can't, it's not grass or clouds or sky. So when we click on it, I think it does a really good job. I think for the most part, you can't tell except for one area where it's got a little bit of a repeating pattern there. So what I would say from here is, number one, maybe backtrack, try boundary warp. If you can't crop it out, if you need this extra space, all right, and you can't crop it out, then I would try boundary warp. If boundary warp, especially with trees, can tend to warp trees, so if boundary warp doesn't work, run with this example and you could open it up in Photoshop when you're done, you'd probably be a two or three minute clone job to get in there and fix the little repeating pattern on that tree. All right, moving on from there, people are gonna love this one. Under the file menu, when you go to export, you will see you can now check multiple presets at the same time. So if you've got one for Facebook, one for Instagram, one for your website, one for clients, whatever, and you are tired of going back and forth and having to do an export for each one, you can now jump in there and just check each preset, click on export and Lightroom will go to town and start exporting versions for all of those presets that you checked. Now, speaking of exporting or presets. How about that? I was going to say speaking of exporting, but that doesn't really make sense. It's time to pay the bills, put the kids through college. If you give me 30 seconds, folks, I have a, uh, I have a brush and gradient system that I got to say out of all, out of any presets I've ever done, I, I get the most positive feedback from this one. Okay. I'll put the link in the description, but these are custom brushes and local corrections, gradients, graduated filters, radio filters that you can use for Lightroom or camera raw. And to me, this, these tools, those brush and gradient tools are the most important. And I included 90 minutes of training that not only, I don't just give you the presets, but I show you how to use them. And I show you why they're so important in your workflow. So there's a big sale going on, on those presets. You can see them in action. You can see some before and afters. So if you've swing by the website to check it out, I would greatly appreciate it. Moving back over to Lightroom. Another one here. So I'm going to head to the, the develop module. And this is, this is one I don't personally get, I, I, but I can tell you this every single time I teach a live seminar workshop, I'm teaching somebody Lightroom and I show them the history panel. Somebody will always say, Hey, can I select a preset and delete a whole bunch of steps? Well, you couldn't, but now you can right click and choose clear history above this step. All right. If you want to keep your history panel tidy, I guess that's a good, quick, easy way to do it. So that feature is now there for all of those people that ask me that question whenever I'm showing them the history panel. From here, 
uh, if we check the presets panel. So <laughs> this is interesting. So presets and profiles in Lightroom in the last year have really gotten a big, big overhaul. And one of those things is sometimes in, in getting an overhaul, especially because now they work you know, cross platform amongst Lightroom uh, CC and Lightroom Mobile, sometimes we lose features. And one of those features was the ability to export a preset. But now we can right click on a preset and we can export it. We can also right click on a folder of presets and export the entire group, which is nice as well. So if you're sharing them between computers, if you've got a camera club and you want to maybe share a group of presets with some friends or whatever, uh, that's a real quick, easy way to export those presets, get them all into one place. And then finally, as far as Lightroom Classic is concerned, the collections panel in the, in a previous update, we've been able to right click and add a color label to a collection, which is nice. It gives you a good visual way to see certain collections. The interesting thing was, and I'll throw up a screen capture because when you went to filter by collections and you could go in here and filter, if you clicked on the little search, you weren't able to filter by color label, which is weird because that's the advantage of color labels. But now you can come in here and you can filter by a specific color label of your collection. So if you're using color labels, this is definitely a feature that you're going to want because that's one of the benefits of color labels is they help you find things and filter through lists of things later on down the line. And one last thing before we finish things up here is if you're using the, the, the version of Lightroom called Lightroom, it's actually no longer called Lightroom CC anymore. It's just now simply called Lightroom. You've got Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. So consider that public service announcement number one. But if you are using this version, a while back they on the, on the mobile side of things, they gave you uh, this new learn feature. So if you go in here to learn, there's been tutorials that got included on the phone and the tablet. Well, these have now made their way over onto the desktop as well. So yours truly even got to contribute some of these tutorials. So as you look through here, you might even find my name and the way it works, it's pretty neat. So you click on the, the tutorial and then you choose start tutorial. It will actually download a copy of the photo. It's not at a place where you can get to it, but it'll download a copy of the photo into your interface and it will walk you through a tutorial slider by slider to get that look or to get that, that whole learning process to really, to really hit forward and hit home in that learning process. You'll be able to walk through an entire tutorial using the same photo that I used or anybody else that did tutorials inside of here. Another thing that's cool is this whole discover thing. Again, this has been on the phone and tablet for a few months, but on discover, you can now click on a photo, all right? What it's doing is it's helping you discover things. So you've got a playback option, which will play through the different settings. It's essentially almost a video of what's been done to edit this, all right? So you can see everything. Then you can click on edits and you can go through here and you can see every single little slider. You can even click. And so you can learn as you're going through and you're clicking on all these different settings, you can see what each one, the effect of each one, what it's having on the photo itself. And then what's really nice about it is you can save all of these settings as a preset and they'll get saved into Lightroom. Now this doesn't work in Lightroom Classic. This is only gonna be in Lightroom, again, formerly known as Lightroom CC. Uh, it's only going to work in Lightroom and again, also on your phone and your tablet in those versions as well, but some pretty cool enhancements and I won't go through the whole thing, but this version of Lightroom has had new features in it to bring it closer uh, to some of the features in Lightroom Classic, like that whole panorama thing that I showed you that's been added into this as well. So make sure you check the description below. I'm going to put links to all of those what's new videos, just in case you missed any new features throughout the year and you want to catch up on things.